what iron production involves is changing the composition so that there's more iron and less of some other materials. It's metallurgy. And what it depends on is people who have skills of knowing what's going on without being able to see it. People have to pay attention to what they hear. They have to pay attention to what they smell. They also pay attention to what they see, it changes in colors. And often, when something's in the furnace, they can't even see it, so they really do depend on things like, like cues from sound. That kind of training takes time. Um, it begins with apprenticeship, and then even in your early years as a craftsman, you're honing those skills. Nothing quite matches the experience of being at a spot where history was actually made, and this is one of those spots. Uh, I'm standing in the raceway of uh, Hibernia Furnace. This is where the water wheel would have been, uh, and you can see by the by my size, you know, where the scale of this thing is. And uh, behind me is Brandywine Creek, and part of the creek's water would be diverted through here to power the enormous water wheel that powered the blowing engines that generated the blast for the furnace. And here's iron ore, rock with iron encased within it. And you'll need coal or charcoal to create the 2100 degrees of Fahrenheit needed to melt the rocks, and some lime as a flux to help all the materials separate from each other to produce liquid iron that can be shaped and cast. Today scrap metal is recycled and used as the raw material for smelting. Steel is iron with extra ingredients added and by controlling the carbon content steels can be made for special products.